Hi guys, welcome back to the channel John D Surprise. So today I'm just gonna give you a bit of a life story of mine, how, where I am today, how did I become blind, and we are gonna ask any questions that y'all want. So let's begin. So I was born on July 9th, 1993 in a little town called Winchester, Tennessee. I quickly moved away from Tennessee due to some robbery at my parents' house. In 1994, I was diagnosed with cancer to the eyes, which gave me my eye condition of retina blastoma. So I lost my little right eye at the age of two and then I lost my left eye at the age of five now normally after that I felt very lost like I didn't want to lose my vision at all I was very scared but I had a stepbrother that helped me out when I came home after I losing my vision and for a while, I didn't know what to do. I would run into walls. I would not go outside like I was scared. So bad that I just didn't know what to do. Throughout most of the, my life, I went to public school. Every year, I made some type of friends. Like, I had a lot of friends in public school but at the same time I always got bullied as well there was one incident where a couple of kids was picking on me because of my blindness and they didn't really have to do it but they did my visually impaired teacher took both of them put them under a blindfold and made them walk up and down the hallway to show them what it feels like to be blind and after that, they respected me, not because of my blindness or anything, but because they respected of the fact of how hard it is to get around without any vision. And we became friends after that. Now, unfortunately, I lost contact with all of these elementary friends of mine, which is sad to say because I was super close to a few of them. Then I moved to... Florida in 2007 where I went to my first blind school so I went to the Florida school for the deaf and blind from 2007 to 2011 I graduated with a standard diploma and I was the fifth highest GPA in my class so at that point instead of valedictorian or salutatorian after that you were if you were in the top five, you get honor court. So I was lucky to be in the top three of the honor court students because of my GPA. Which, at the same time, I shouldn't have been because my senior year, we all get senior ideas and stuff where we just didn't want to do anything. <laughs> like, And that's how I felt for the first half of the year. I just didn't want to do any of my work. But teachers were asking me what was happening why was not doing what I was doing and etc so I made a few mistakes in high school one was so my senior year of high school I got my first girlfriend and that was that was horrifying like not horrifying but that was pretty bad because she would control me and stuff like that um and the reason why i say that is because throughout high school i loved playing basketball basketball was my getaway time from school and i also played goalball which a different video i will explain what goalball is how to play it some rules and etc for those of you that don't know what goalball is but that's where I love to do. The basketball court was my home. 
basically. Uh, and so it was my first ever blind school that I went to fully because growing up I did go to Governor Moorhead, but just for a field trip. And I got to hang out with some friends and people I didn't know, but it was a carnival and who doesn't like carnivals? So, it was my first blind high school, or f first blind school period, and I was so amazed of how many blind and visually impaired people there were. Uh, I was also scared at the same time because you didn't go home right after school, and I wasn't used to that at all. So, that's that was very scary, and... Uh, after time, I grew into it, and it was fine. And like this high school, there were always drama and stuff like that. Like, I could t go into what really happened, but I don't think that's a good idea. So, basically, what I mean by drama and everything is, if you do one thing, the very next day, the whole campus will know about it. And to me, that's just wildfire just waiting like you can't eat a bad meal without someone knowing about it like it's that bad it was that bad and I'm sure it is still today but anyways so throughout life when people ask me about my vision loss the first thing they always say is I'm sorry that this happened to you and Honestly, I wish people would stop saying that because, A, it's not your fault. It just happened. Like, I tell people all the time, honestly, I went through cancer, and cancer, as we know, is very deadly. Um, there are five stages of cancer. I went through stage four, so a lot of chemo was involved. And I tell people all the time, it's not your fault. I'm, it sucked that I went through it, but I'm happy to be alive. So I'm grateful for that. So now I'm in college after taking many years off from school because I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Well, I did know what I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to go about it. And I feel like I should have started way early, but it's okay. I'm going through it right now. Um, I didn't really know how to cook or anything. So about three years ago, I went to a center in Daytona, Florida, and I learned how to cook and etc. Um, I did two job shadowings, and at the rehabilitation center in Daytona I was the first ever blind maintenance guy totally blind maintenance guy it's never been done ever at the centers from what I've been told I could be they, I could have been told wrong but at that center in particularly I was the first and I made such a great impression on my supervisor I went back a year later for technology training for college and we caught up and he said I want you back and that made a great deal to me because it knows that I can do anything that, uh, that other people like sighted people tell me I cannot do so it just goes to show no matter what you put your mind to it's easy to do now maybe sometimes it may be hard to do and everything and it's okay to ask for help and stuff but I've never let any challenges back bring me down I may get frustrated some but I never let it stop me from doing what I'm doing so my uh my life career I really want to be a broadcaster for sports um I'm a huge Yankees fan, so I'm hoping one day I can go to a Yankees game. I'm also hoping to meet 
John Sterling and Susan Wollman, which are the broadcasters for the Yankees on the radio. Uh, so I'm hoping one day I can work for the Yankees and also work for my mentor who used to broadcast for the Daytona Tortugas at Jackie Robinson Stadium, which, as all of you sports fans know, Jackie Robinson was first African American to play in the MLB back in 1947 for the Brooklyn Dodgers. So that was very good that they named a stadium after him, especially since during his spring training he stayed in Daytona Beach. So hooray, a little history lesson there for y'all sports fans, in case you didn't know. But I have a great mentor. He he said he would be willing to work with me and be helpful and we're great friends and that's why I feel like is most important. Sometimes we do internships or whatever and after that we just don't hear from people. But at the same time there are some that is inspired by us as the blind and visually impaired community and wants to work with us. So that's really great. Um, I know I got a little sidetracked there, but you know, this is my story of my life and my life is always complicated and weird and always sidetracked it. So hooray for me. But anyways, so that's basically my life story of how I went through things and what I would like to do and stuff so if you like this if you watch this video please hit that subscribe button I would always respond back to any comments that y'all put out I am not afraid to do that and if I see a comment and I don't respond right away I will get back to you as soon as I can so thank you for watching this video